Uh-oh, what in the world am I into now? Yep, I got a DOA PV6505 plus 112. I think this is the 50 watt version, maybe a little bit more. But yeah, I'm recording with it the other day and uh, trying to double up some tracks. And it just slowly started dying. The sound slowly went away and then boom, all of a sudden, nothing, dead quiet. I got mad and uh, smacked the top of the amp case and the reverb made noise. So I knew the power amp was working. Um, so something's wrong in the preamp power section. So I Googled it and you know, the good old interweb said, yeah, the power circuit right here for the preamp tubes, V1, V2, V3, and V4. We lose the heater power to all of these, and these come off the transformer. Through a filtering cap out of the transformer, through a full, full wave bridge rectifier, into a couple of caps, a power trans, or a, a power resistor to drop the voltage a bit, and then some more filtering caps. They say these diodes go bad. So I get online and look, and sure enough, the heaters for these tubes draw about 0.3 amps a piece. And so if you got four of them in parallel, they're going to draw about 0.3 times four or 1.2 amps. These diodes are only rated to one amp. So yeah, it's highly likely that one of these four is bad. So I'm going to check this real quick. So we'll turn the board and the four diodes. Are these four right here. Um, uh, of course, this amp is discharged. It's been off for 24 hours. I wouldn't be sticking a metal screwdriver in here if it was. So I'm going to check these four, see if any of them are bad. And while I'm in here, I'm going to poke around and take uh, quite a few measurements. But anyway, here's the four diodes for the full wave bridge. Here is a 0.68 ohm 5 watt power resistor, which is right here. Uh, I'm going to check that and then I'm going to check these caps as well. And I figured, well, I'll take you along. Quick note, I used to be an electronics technician. Um, so I'm not really scared of doing this, but if you have never been shocked or never used a voltmeter, do not work on a tube power amp because there are lethal voltages in here that can kill you because it doesn't take much to stop your heart. So if you don't know what you're doing, you don't know how to check for absence of voltage, do not do this, but I'm going to give it the old college try. So let's get the meter out. I'll show you what I'm doing. I got just a normal old fluke here. So what I'm going to do is set it on. This is going to be hard to do upside down. I'm going to set it on the diode function, which will show us diodes conduct current one direction, but not the other direction. If when you put the meter on the diode function, it measures voltage. That'll tell you if you have the uh, PN voltage drop correct. So it's overloaded there. Probably means that one's bad. Let's check the other one. See, that's a good diode. So it's taking 0.613 volts to get that diode to start conducting electricity. And these are um, polarity sensitive. So that one's good, but this one's bad. Uh, we might have got it. So let's check the other two. This one's bad. But this one's good. So two of the four are bad, and they are the uh, D18 and D19. So they're coming off the tap from the transformer. Um, so I'm gonna take these out. Now, it's important when you do this, I always forget. You could look at the schematic. What, by the way, this is a killer uh, schematic I found online. Take a picture of the circuit board before you take components out. So I'm going to take a picture to make sure I know the polarity of the diodes before I take them out. It's these four. So I'm going to flip it over. And it was the bottom two that were bad, but I'm going to go ahead and replace all four while I'm in here. 
So, the first thing I do is get my solder sucker ready. And you can tell this board has got really hot here. You can tell it's uh, it's discolored, but let's get rid of this oh, pre-10 year soldering iron dingo. And solder's out. All I'm doing is melting the solder. And as soon as I see it turn liquid, I suck it up with this solder sucking tool. You could use solder wick too, but it takes longer and it makes a mess. So I much prefer solder suckers. Okay, now I'm going to try to use the soldering iron to bend these up. Nope, oh, that's not going to happen. Use the right tool. If you, can, if you can see this, I'm going to try to bend the leads straight up and try not to damage the traces Oops, like I just did there, dummy. God, still pulling the trace up. Okay, I got the four diodes pushed through the board and I confirmed they're the right direction. So now, I'm gonna solder them in and I left the leads wide out as a W so it hold them not tight to the board because I want a little air around them. But now I'm just gonna solder them in place and I will trim these off and solder from both angles. So you tin the tip. So you can get the lead And then I'll go solder from the other side. So I got my four replacement diodes in. They're still one amp diodes. I ordered some two amps. Um, in case this happens again, I can fix it completely. But anyway, these are the four I replaced. It doesn't look awesome, but let's see. Overload, and if we touch the pin here. Yep, 0 0.509. It takes uh, half a volt to get this diode to conduct. Well, I got her mostly assembled, I think. I went and got these two by fours to set the amp up on something so the tubes wouldn't hit the table. And I guess we go plug her in. I'll show you what I got here. Here's the, uh, I'm not plugged in yet, so nothing's voltaged up yet. Those are the four dials that we replaced. So, we're gonna come over here. I got the single 12. Plugged in with a jumper, so let's connect that. Okay, put the power in. Okay, I'll plug into the input. All right, everything clear, no tools. Hit the power switch. We got a light, that's good. Still no sound, why no sound? Oh, standby switch. Moment of truth. Do we, yep, I hear a noise. Yep, oh, I got the reverb crank. It works. Heck yes, lucky bastard. Let me go plug something in. All right, I'm plugged in here. I'm on the clean channel. Yep, all works. Does the crunch channel work? Yeah, a little too well. 
Okay, how about uh, overdrive or uh, lead? <laughs> Fantastic. Just in case you don't believe me on how deadly these amps can be, I've been going around checking voltages in here. Um, but if we're going to get all across a leg of the output power transformer and see how much voltage is on here. So my hands are clear. I'm only going to touch it with one point. 470 volts DC. Can you see that? That'll kill you. If you get into that, that'll kill you. And let's see how long it takes that for to, to discharge. Here's standby. It actually went up to 490. Watch how long it sits there. We're still at 497. I'm going to cut the power totally. Power is off. It's drained down to about four, well, 300, 350. I'm kind of scared to touch anything. So we're down to 260 DC still. It's been off for, I don't know, we're probably around in 20 seconds. 190, that'll still kill you. 50 volts DC will kill you if you got a big enough uh, supply, a big enough current supply. We're just now getting under 100 volts. Yeah, something you don't want to screw around with for sure. If you don't know what you're doing, right? I'm insulated with wood here. Um, I actually shouldn't be using this type of lead, but uh, we just crossed 50 volts. It's been, what, almost 45 seconds. In any case, um, it's fixed, and that's what it was, those stupid diodes for the 6-volt heater voltage for the... 12AX7 preamps, one V1 through V4. So pretty simple fix. Now it's gonna take me an hour to get this, all the chicken head knobs put on and get it back in that, in that box. But success, thanks for watching.